In Investing 101 today, Jennifer Framark, a financial advisor at Edward Jones, is here to give us her take on what could happen going forward with investments. And I'm happy to have you back on the show. You were on in the last quarter. Have you done any adjustments now that we have a new president in the White House? Well, sure. We, we were expecting the markets to increase after the election because there was uncertainty. And now that we know Donald Trump is going to be or is our president now, We've made a few adjustments because his policies are, are different than what we are expecting from Hillary Clinton. That said, as soon as the elections were over, we saw a lot of increases in, in most of the sectors. A couple of laggers behind were the technology and consumer staples, but we've seen a lot of price increases in those other sectors. So those, those valuations are pretty steady right now. We do see a bull market ahead of us. And so you just want to make sure that your portfolio is spread evenly between the various sectors and maybe take a little opportunity in the technology sector and the consumer staples. Those are your two top priorities right now, it sounds like. Well, right now, but also um, when we see an interest rate increasing environment, small and mid cap companies do tend to do well. So that's another area we see that you could be looking for opportunities as well. Maybe even the rest of 2000, which is loaded up with small caps. Sure, sure. And that way you're evenly spread out between several companies rather than just purchasing one or two stocks. Now you always want to have a mix of stocks and bonds. So I know you're watching interest rates. And what do you see for bond investing? Well, sure. As interest rates increase, we're going to see bond prices come down, and that's just the natural effect. Also, as stock prices go up, we see bond prices go down. But there's always a place in any portfolio for bonds, especially the more conservative of an investor you are, you're going to look towards bonds. So as we see bond prices, as interest rates increase, we're going to see those bond prices come down. But you can ladder those bonds so that you're going to capture that increase in interest rates over time as your older bonds come due. Now, this could get dicey. I know a lot of people are looking to make some global investments, say, in Japan, China, Europe. But we do have some issues going on here with trade. Sure. So how do you handle that? Well, again, you always want to have a place for diversification. So you always want to do a little bit of international and, and how you do that and where you do that can be important. So you do want to do a mix between small, mid and large cap stocks as well. And so you can do that through ETFs, through mutual funds. So that choice is up to you. We see China's growth has slowed, but that doesn't mean they're not growing. It just means over the years they've been growing at a fast pace and we're seeing that pace slowing down. But don't take that as no growth. They're still going to be growing. Where we do see also some, um, some growth is in Japan and Europe. Because overseas they've been lagging behind the U.S., we do see that as an opportunity. It just, just may not happen overnight. What do you think about the U.S. economy? Well, yeah, we still see a bull market ahead of us. We see that um, with with Trump's policies, we may see taxes lower. Uh, we may see a little bit looser regulation, and um, you know because. If we see taxes come down, that puts more money into people's pockets. And so we can see spending increasing. So that could be a good thing for companies and for individuals as well. It's pro-growth. Pro-growth, that's right. Thank you, and come back again. Thank you so much.